Welcome to Cooksey and the Coach. I'm here with former RCH team manager, Plano. Former. former RCH team manager or team marketing manager, however you want to do it. Plano team manager, is that right? Yep. Uh, mechanic, when Brian Deegan launched his bike, Hart yep. Huntington, manager of some sort. The all-knowing, Everything. the Everything. all-knowing, Kenny fucking Watson. What's up, Watson? What's up, buddy? How are you? Good, man. Enjoying the Nationals. Uh, I'm digging it. How was it out there? Probably the same it was at your house so from the TV. <laughs> okay, so I, I want to trash Mav TV because I was fucking furious for this first Why? Couple... Why would you want to thrash them? They're doing, they do the you first wanna, time you wanna... ever tried to do it like this. Hold NBC on. did the hey, full production hey. before. Before you cut me off, let me tell you why. Because I was furious. Because okay, so if you if you pay, you're not supposed to have to watch commercials. I saw maybe 12 to 15 minutes of that first 250 moto because it was constant commercials. I'm like, wait, isn't that why I paid? Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know you paid for. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't okay. pay for nothing. It's on TV, regular TV. So I didn't. Well, I didn't yeah, care. regular TV. If I didn't pay, I wouldn't be pissed. But just like the Peacock app. I paid, oh. so I don't want commercials. I want to watch that thing nonstop. And I was pissed that it kept cutting out. And I'm like, I paid for this. But I guess they had some. Okay, so I take back. I'm not nearly as mad as I was when I first when it first happened. I guess they had some sort of a snafu. And there's a feed that doesn't have commercials and a feed that does. I guess the feed that didn't have commercials went down. So they just threw the commercial feed on the other one. Yeah. Okay. No biggie. Shit happens. I get it. No problem. Re All you do is I'm sure I'm sure you uh, just opened up your computer and just looked at the lap times when the commercials were on to see if anything happened. Hundred percent. That's what I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and I watched Jason Anderson climb through the pack like a savage. Dude, yeah, he guy. he he had a ride that was not what results going to tell you. I mean, he rode. He looked like he rode pretty good. They should have showed him a little bit more of that second moto but dude both motos i mean he was on and that second moto i thought he had a great start it's just unfortunate i don't i mean when barsha hit him i don't think he meant to he just i mean that's that kind of stuff happens when you're not first yeah, that and, turn that turn that second turn was mayhem all day both classes well and it, and it really slowed the field down so if you didn't get a good start you're 50 yards behind coming out of that second turn yeah it was gnarly. Uh, hey, how about Chase Sexton? Dude, what a, yeah. what a beast. Yeah, good for him. I hope he uh, learned from everything from last year, from smashing himself on the ground and just takes what he can every weekend and week out now. Just ride it out. If a fourth place finishes, that's all you got. That's all you got. Don't ride over your head and get hurt. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, dude. <laughs> <laughs> did I you see so. him did you see him over jump and head shake when he passed yeah. Rosson? i mean you can only have a couple of those moments before one of them you wake up going what happened you know yeah uh, my 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 uh i wasn't really surprised because i knew he could do it i didn't know if he would do it. it was kenny he uh i like i like his demeanor his attitude he seemed like he was really upbeat and in a good place mentally i could tell this listen to him talk in his interviews and stuff, but uh, I'm happy for him. He needed that. Dude, and I 100%, I'm going to go ahead and apologize to everybody in the rocks and camp. I didn't think he'd be out there for outdoors. I figured that split with Honda after Supercross, I thought that was it. I stand corrected. Whatever they did, they repaired it. It's good, and I was yeah. so stoked to well, see him out there. Yeah, you got to remember, man, for some reason, at the caliber of rider that that him eli those dudes are they're gonna they're gonna have to do something pretty wrong to get clipped and not let them race i mean they've already have so much invested in them do you think they're just gonna cut their ties and say yeah whatever just beat it no they want to get everything they can out of them and for him he's just trying to salvage something i would assume but he's definitely you know i definitely think he's in the the right you know the right place where he needs to be right now yeah, I mean, and watching him ride, it was funny. I was watching it with my old man. I'm like, I could watch Kenny ride on a track by himself. The way he stands on the bike and just double yeah. triples. Is there anyone in the history of this sport that has done the first three laps faster than him on every race? Yeah, I, I kind of like, I think the only person out there that you can compare to his riding style is Jet. 
Yeah. Did you, hear, did you hear what Twitch called Jet the other day? Uh-uh. I started laughing. And listen, this Hanson, don't come at me. Uh, Jason Lawrence already wants to fight me. Um, but uh, Josh Hanson, he called, he called Jet Josh Hanson with heart. That's Twitch's words, not mine. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, he's not wrong. <laughs> That's hot. Yeah. 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 So I thought that, I mean, I thought it was uh, the races were, they were decent. I mean, whatever. It was, uh, you know, it was cool to see Ryan out there. He's pretty surprised the shit out of me, but I knew he wouldn't just have that raw speed. I just figured, you know, he would do okay. But dude, I don't know if anybody's ever taken five years off of a bike and then jump off the couch to get a top five. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Six, if you count outdoors. And that last year, probably seven, because he only did two races and broke his neck. So, I mean, yeah, that, it, yeah I, I mean, he didn't look that different. He, I mean, he, he did really good. I, I think those guys are going to be, he's going to be up there in the podium and he might even get a win. I, I mean, he's going to do a lot better than I thought he was. Yeah, think about that. Uh, Jet, was, Jet was 14 years old last time he raced. <laughs> Dude. oh that's funny but i mean it's the new athletes and i've been beating this for a while now that they have it wrong on age your athletic prime is 25 to 35 it's not you don't peak yeah. out at 23 like these guys like marty tripes was done at 23 i mean it's not like that anymore yeah i don't um, think that. i don't think it is he's 30 how old is dungy 37 30 no no he's like 33 or 34 He's not that oh, old because wow. he yeah, quit at like 28. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he has some little bit left in the tank if he wants to. I just never seen anyone sit out super cross and want to ride outdoor. It's usually the other way around. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think maybe, I, I don't know. I could see somebody like Freddie Norm, but that's the only guy I could ever think of it that would even ask. Come on, dude. That. What? Compare apples to apples. Uh, well, I'm comparing a Hyundai to a Corvette. I get it. So yeah. How you about said Chris I didn't dude. What? You're to, you're Fred, you're trying to compare Freddie Norn with Ryan Dungey. I said a Hyundai versus a Corvette. I'm just saying, anyone, anyway, if I could, I would, that's how far I have to go down to find somebody who probably asked to ride outdoors. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, uh, jumping around to do the lights class, what happened to your, uh, your buddy, Jalik? Hold on. We'll get to the lights. Let's finish the 450s first. We got to talk about Christian Craig. Dude, what about him? He killed him. Fucking look great. Awesome. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't sure coming off of how mentally taxing that championship was. Sometimes guys have a bit of a hangover. I mean, he got a bit no. of a I mean, he's been out here. I've seen him, seen him ride a couple of times. He's been on the tracks. And, you know, last week or what was this week? I don't remember the weeks anymore. But uh, he's been on the bike. And I heard from some people down in Florida that he's been riding that thing, ripping. And, you know, before Dylan got hurt, he was right there. So. Dude, yeah, Dylan, that sucked. That's such a bummer. Um, and that that thumb injury that he has is a gnarly one. Uh, when you yeah, have to have your thumb tendon done. Yeah, not... that's a gnarly one. That's yeah. a, that takes a long time to recover from. That's what I say. We might not see him this season. I hope that's wrong, but that's that could be the issue. Uh, Caroli, what would you think of Caroli? That's what I figured he'd be. I, you know, he was, I, I think you know, that he's like Dungy. The more he raced with those guys and knows the racecraft, he will be better. Do you think he's going to stick around for the whole year? Nah, I don't, I don't either. Well, I think he might. I think he might come back and ride a few more races, but I don't think he's going to race them all because uh, I heard him in an interview and he said something about um, he's going to do the donations and he would really like to race Red Bud before. Okay. Yeah. So maybe he'll so do yeah. maybe, I don't know, maybe he comes out here, you know, then and rides a lot the you know, red bud and a few other ones but i don't know and then how how bad do i feel if i'm aaron plessinger getting smoked by the two vets two guys come out of retirement and kicked my ass yeah well he uh i mean gotta give it to him he's coming off an injury who knows how healthy he was and what his deal was how long he's been riding yeah, and I love Plessinger. I really want him to get it together, but that yeah. can't be comfortable going back to the truck and Roger DeCoster because he's not exactly what you'd call a real forgiving guy of poor results. I mean, even that little interview they did with him on TV, he's like, we need to do better. I'm like, dude, 
lighten up just a touch, Roger. <laughs> he said that about Ryan. Ryan got fifth. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the top five, but we need to be better. Uh, I thought he was talking about Caroli too. So, but I'm like, I mean, dude. really, you got. I mean, you got to look at the guy who's been there in the Baker's factory, who you really put your money on. That's Plessinger. So I feel like he really, there's a lot of pressure on him to beat those two old guys. Yeah, isn't, that, isn't that what they I, say? The first guys you got to be to your teammates. I don't know. Yeah, because they're the only ones that have the same, same exact opportunities as you. You can't blame the bike if it's those guys. You can blame no. the bike if it's a Honda or something. Dude, but you know how Aaron is. He's probably so laid back. He ain't, that ain't gonna. Dude, he ain't gonna get stressed out over that. He's he has that same attitude, win or lose. He's happy. You know what I mean? Uh, he's just, he's just happy. Why we all... grateful that he has a you know a dirt bike and he can race. That's why we all love that guy. Uh, another guy I wanted to talk about in the 450s is Garrett Marchbanks. Did you notice him out there? They really didn't show him, but I seen him and he was in the top 10, both motos. So that's he ran good. consistent and he's had a hard time because he has that Addison's disease. Where yeah, I, knew you, I know you like him, he's a Utah guy, definitely. Yeah, from Colville, Utah. Yeah, but he has Addison's disease, which kind of it's like kind of like Epstein Barr drains all your adrenaline. I, I don't know, coach explained it a hell of a lot better than I did. But to see him coming back from that and riding a 450 on that gnarly track out there in California and getting up there in the top 10 or 11th yeah. or whatever he got, that's that's badass. And Shane McElrath, too. Yeah, what did he get overall? He didn't get top 10. He got, I think he got 10th overall. Let's see. March Banks got 11th. McElrath got 10th. Okay. But they were right there. Um, I, I, both, both of those guys, I would say that's a success for what they had. McElrath is not really an outdoor guy. And to get, no. just jump on that bike. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, yeah, it's funny because uh, my roommate's been testing with him the last like week, you know. And uh, I said, I asked him the other night. I said, "How's he going to do?" He was like, "Yeah." I go, "Well, he's a good starter, so I mean, the worst he should be able to do is start up front and just go backwards." You know, how far back do you go? He said, "He goes, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't really see that flashing of speed, but you know, he's definitely a good rider." So. Yeah. Well, and, and after qualifying, I was like, oh, shit, it's not going to go good. Because he was like 18th. Yeah. And then that first moto, he totally turned it around. I mean, yeah. So He redeemed himself? Totally redeemed himself. Um, <laughs> all right. You want to talk about the 250s now? And this, dude, hold on. Before we get to the 250s, has there ever been a more dominant day by Honda? Not since the 80s, I don't think. Wow, that was pretty impressive. I mean, they got four riders and they went one, two, one, two. They needed that. They it definitely every moto. needed that. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. definitely needed to have some kind of, a, you know, prep, a pep in their step to get something to relight that fire over there. They haven't really, I mean, it's one race. They did great. You know, let them keep, hopefully they keep going. Yeah, for I sure. Know that they, I know that they're spending a lot of money, a lot of money. So. 250s 250s are rock solid i don't see the lawrence brothers getting outside the top three either one of them unless something happens yeah um i i would I, say i have a feeling they could come through pretty easy yeah uh, dude it looks like jet was just cruising around for about 10 15 minutes and he just drops the hammer and just maintains it no big deal yeah and especially and then, on that, that track was i mean it was pretty it looked like it was pretty one line i mean they they did have the inside outside but it looked like all the outsides were way slower yeah, there were a couple. I mean, it's just that's how these outdoor tracks get sometimes, especially that one, the way it's laid out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they did a good job with prep and stuff. I don't know how you can make it more lines than that. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just the way the track flows, but that's the way Paris is. It's pretty one line. There's not, you know, and then when the second moto, it's tricky because this, the way they water it, they just water hard pack and it just turns into ice. Yeah, that's a little scary, those first couple laps. Yeah, so. Did you see in the second 250 moto, that rookie with a three-digit number? Uh, God, I forget. Noah Viney? Just pin it on the outside and almost get the whole shot? Uh, I, I didn't really know. Oh, oh yeah. Was he on a Husky? I think he's on a Honda. Honda or Gas Gas. It was a red bike, but he just pinned it, got into second. I mean, he dropped like a rock. Like he, he clearly isn't at the level, but I mean, dude, I'll give that guy credit for having balls enough to go for it. I mean, he, he came just, around the he came around the the first turn in like second or third, right? The second, like yeah. Jump, 
as soon as I hit the jump, he was done, right? Oh, it was like a rock, man. Like just at the bottom of an ocean, just dropping. But he went for it. So good on him. I mean, what, what more can you ask for, you know, for somebody like that? But what, what did you think of Joe Shimoda? I love that he got in there. I didn't expect him to be the top pro circuit guy. No, I didn't either. Uh, he looked like he rode pretty strong. It looks like our boy Lucas Myrtle had a pretty good day for all his guys, huh? Lucas is, dude, everything that guy's, he's just spinning gold right now, right? Yeah, dude. He's, I mean, those brothers, Lawrence brothers are his client. Joe Shimoda is his client. And uh, he's just doing a good job, period. I mean, the way he's marketing those guys is brilliant. Brilliant. Even, even the guy on his team who's struggling the worst, he's handling really good. Uh, Voland. Uh, Voland is one of his guys who's had just an abysmal supercross, couple supercross seasons. And he's coming in here on just a few days riding. But I mean, he did, he got a solid ride. He was what, 10th? What did he get overall? 11th, 11th. But I mean, you can build off that. That's a deep field. And if you give Max Holland an 11th, no crashes, he came from behind to get those scores. I'm like, I can work with that. We can, we can build. So, and then uh, RJ. Hamp- does, does he have McAdoo? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, that's the only other guy I know that he has. This is the only grief I have with the coverage. Well, a couple, I got a couple of griefs. Okay. Let's hear them. Uh, since you, when, since you hammered me when for the it. guys, when the guys, they don't follow up on the riders in between the motos. Like what happened to him? Um, like what happened to Justin Cooper, that moto? Why did he drop like that? What happened to Marchman or uh, what's his name? The guy I was just talking about. McAdoo. The pro circuit guy. Yeah. How, where did he crash? They just show him driving away. They don't say nothing. They don't follow up. Like what happened to Eli? Why did he drop that moto? What happened? Like they just they just didn't have the pit reporting wasn't too good and my our your brother Jason Thomas he was uh looked like he was a little tight he's a little tight he did okay though he did all right I'm just saying he's a little tight tight and uh, but I just think that like in Supercross like the pit reporting I as I understand it is you gotta you gotta find the people you gotta go after them. Yeah, well, the thing you know is, what I mean. You just go to the cameraman. Hey, we'll go to your producer. Hey, I'm going to go check this out. Take a camera guy, and you know they go and do an interview. Well, you and know? that's something maybe they'll figure out. Now they had, so they have JT doing the you know the interviews. He did all of them, and then you have the guys in the booth. JT can't. Yeah, go but chase. I understand that he could have walked over to the pits in between JT? the races. You know how little time there is, like ten oh, minutes. Did they have time? He no. could have well, dude. He, well, they he need one the, more guy. They need the one more guy in the right there next to the podium. Yeah, I guess he probably could have, but then they're and in his ear. Like, they're telling him where on? to What's go. Going on? Even if you don't want to talk to the riders, talk to the team manager. No, I'm, I'm dude. I, I totally agree with you. I just think you need one more person to do that. I like it works great when Daniel and Will both are there, and one of them can dive in the pits, and one of them can stay out there. But yeah, if you got one guy, you got to keep him near the podium. I get it, you know. Yeah, um, well, they just need another guy. Just, dude, you you tripped, dude. Like back in the day, like early, we're talking like late '80s, early '90s, even before, like when they used to have the, you know, they didn't have these things called phones where you could text somebody and say, "Hey, what's up? What happened?" <laughs> you know, you right. can do that now. If That's I'm fair. Sure JT has everybody's phone number. That's or you get that lined up before the race. Hey, I'm going to text you if there's any problems. Find out what's up because I can't get there. Okay, cool. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna text JT. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this clip and just send it to him. So I'll let him know he needs to text people in between. Watson says text. Oh, people. No, I'll tell him. I'll tell him. <laughs> I've already perfect. I've already sent an email into the Pulp MX show about oh, my Jesus. grief. Please tell me you didn't. My grief for the day. <laughs> oh. Did you like that clip I sent you? Dude, that was pretty funny. My grief of the day is, uh, yeah, Lindsay stroking it on camera. So, why don't you post that? Why should I post it? You post it. You pulled it. No, I don't want to post it. I don't want to deal with that idiot. I don't even want him to hear it. <laughs> but you want me want to? to? I don't want him to even. <laughs> I don't even want him to call me. I don't want to deal with that guy. I don't want to deal with any of them. Yeah, that is what it is. Um, yeah. So, all dude, in all, though, I. RJ Hampshire, did you see him take that guy out in practice? Yeah. 
Holy. See, they showed that too, but they I, I didn't know the whole story. Just like RJ. What happened to him in the second moto? No one knows. Bad start. Does he hurt? No, he had Slow a crash on. and came through the pack. You know? Yeah. Um, but no, that it, it was funny too. When I first saw the crash, it looked like that dude come over and cleaned out RJ. And McGrath goes, no, 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 no. And he broke it down. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're actually right. If a guy's coming from the outside and you're behind, the inside guy can go wherever he wants. That out, outside guy is the one that's got to check up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sounds about like RJ. Just landed on him and just torpedoed it. Yeah. Um, did you see Mosman's practice crash? No. Holy crap. I can't even believe he raced. Dude, he what? was like fifth gear pinned. I don't know which part of the track it was. It was on Instagram. I'll pull it and put it on here. And he swaps and just launches maybe 30 feet down the track on his ass, just whipped. And I'm like, wow. He's uh, good for those. Mosman's good for a big crash now and then, isn't he? Yeah, he almost seems to do better after he gets that out of the way, right? Yeah. He's tough as nails. I'll give him that. I'll guarantee he's going to be sore tonight, though. Hey, what did he end up the second moto? Michael Mosman went three or no, he went, let's see. Nine four for fourth Second overall. Fourth. Yeah. Oh, or nine four for fifth. And then oh, that ain't R bad. Five then, overall. Oh, eh? Yeah. And yeah. Who, was, who was fourth? Joe? RJ Hampshire. RJ. Joe yeah. got third, right? Yeah. Joe got Joe got third, and Lawrence has owned the podium. The one two. Um, dude, how funny was it? Now tell me, Mitch Payton's not going to be sending running shoes or just freaking out over forkner hammaker dude those guys i don't faded. think i don't think hammaker because i i you know he knows he's in shape and he probably just got i mean that was his first national really yeah he looks and fast as shit man he's fast as qualifier my buddy trains him and says the kid works his ass off and he uh he I know, works too I hard for a fact he probably got pumped up or something happened but no. he'll be, mark my words, he'll be good. He'll be good. That kid will be okay. I got some insight on that. Yeah, nobody, nobody, coach used to work with Hammaker. So, yeah, nobody's ever questioned his dedication. The problem is, is Epstein Barr. They've ran him too far. He's a kid that will never say no. Run five miles. He'll run 10. You know, he'll, he runs himself down and he never really gave him, he came into oh, the right. pros with Epstein Barr and he's never really recovered. Coach hmm. was like, dude, I, if he was my athlete, I'd sit him out for a year, rest him. And then bring him back. So Did it's they almost set an overtrain. Didn't they last year? I don't know. I hope so. I hope they. Yeah, did. they sent him out all. all last oh yeah, year yeah, for the outdoors. Much. Yeah, for the outdoors. No, he got all his points from Supercross last year. Yeah, so he, he, he he rode he rode the first Paula and he couldn't even do it, so they sat him out for the summer. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, didn't get back on a bike for a long time because he rode the East Coast. Then he got hurt, or the West Coast. I don't even know what coast he rode um I, they, east, that was that was that covid year where i was all confused i don't know which was east and which yeah was. yeah 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 um then uh dude how about levi kitchen in that first moto i'm sorry that, that dude's ripping good. he looks like a guy that could get up there and get on the podium or win do for some reason his riding style reminds me of j-laws it does doesn't it yeah, yeah. so yeah, he, he's a guy to watch. I know he got tangled up and was way back in the second moto, but that's okay. I mean, not bad for, for his first full season. So Yeah, well, Romano pulled one of those ripping hole shots and then went backwards too, but same thing. Yeah, he got up there, he let a lap, and now you know at the speed where you have to be, you know? Yeah, it's, you know, I like when the, the rookies do that and they just, and they're not afraid to get up there and battle and, and, and go full send. I mean, it's, I mean, they ride together all the time. So you got all those, you got all, all the star guys on the light spikes. And then you got um, down in Florida, you got Dylan and Craig. I mean, dude. And Tomac they, comes they, in a lot too. What's that? Tomac comes over there and rides with them a lot too. So saying that those kids should be ripping. They should be going fast if they ride with all those guys. I mean, it's scary to think that Danger Boy is right in the mix with them, and he's the only reason for <laughs> B class. Oh, dude, Danger Boy is. I'm gonna go ahead and say he's a lock. He's got talent too. He's yeah. got everything lining up, and it's funny because they. I heard that they were trying to push him to. Uh, 
to move up to ride pro sport, ride yeah. A, and then turn, get, go to Supercross next year. And his dad is saying, nope, we're staying to schedule. We're riding B class. After Loretta's, we'll get turned to A, and we'll go from there. We're not – we're racing Loretta Lens as intermediate. Just like we planned on. Good for him. Yeah. Absolutely. He's, just, he's like, they're trying to push him. The, and he's just like, no. That's what my contract says. That's what we're doing. Good. Because, like I said, with these guys racing to 25 to 35, there's no rush. There's no reason. Yeah, he's not. He, he knows that. Brian knows that. He's not trying to push his kid into, you know, racing 80 times a year. You no. know? No. And here's what I, okay, here's, everyone talks about Danger Boy and, you know, oh, I, I hear a lot of the jealous other amateurs talking about his bike or this or that. I watch the way the kid rides and the way that he adapts around ruts and can stand up. He's got one of those styles. He's not only the stuff that you can train, but he's got the stuff you can't train. And well, he's just, he's got it. I hope he well, stays he's hungry. one of those kids that grew up watching, learning. He's like his dad. He's like a sponge. Education, like he's smart he's just like his dad when it comes to learning and educate yourself and and that's the way he is with dirt bikes anything to do with the dirt bike when he was a kid he would watch he would learn he'd watch you know videos he'd go to the races and study lines he would just you know what i mean so yeah. and it's not that his dad made him it's just something that he wanted to do and he enjoyed it dude that yeah i, I can't wait until he goes pro but yeah i'm glad they're i'm glad they're letting him wait um how about pierce brown went seven seven for ninth overall that kind of <laughs> sucks right yeah well, that's nasty oh yeah yeah it was a but weird dude, day sometimes that seven seven will get you a podium <laughs> right unfortunately <laughs> he got ninth here but hey he rode really good the points are points it is what it is uh styles yeah, robertson i mean he got good points sevens are good points so two yeah sevens. yeah styles robertson lines. what do you what do you think of styles Dude, I don't know. I don't know the kid. First of all, I really never followed his career. Um, you know, I heard he's a nice kid. He works hard, but I just think it's one of those, uh, you know, one of those one of those riders that's, you know, everything has to be it has to be a perfect day for every for him to do good. You know, I'll, everything has to align, and it doesn't look like he goes in and makes shit happen. Yeah, he's been hurt a lot. I actually really like him. I like his style. I like that he's going to star next year. I think he's going to be a guy. I think in Supercross, immediately he's going to be he's going to be the guy that comes out of the woodwork next year, in my opinion. So, so is he going to star next year? Yeah, it's done. Oh, huh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, and then uh, Nate Thrasher was back there. He got like what thirteenth. That's tough, man. I mean, he's just hot or cold, right? Yeah. I call him Ricky Bobby, first or last. I mean, there's nothing in between. He just he, – He's definitely not on fire. He needs to get some sort of consistency to keep a job. I mean, I know they're, they're, you know that win in the East-West shootout will probably get him a lot, but he's going to have to get better outdoors. What say you, Kenny? Yeah, I mean, last year was his only his first year, right? And he didn't even ride all the outdoors, did he? um that's a good question i'm not i'm not positive i mean dude, you're, you're trying to say he needs to get better he's the first race you know of the season Who true I mean, true but i mean he got he did get good starts i mean i think if he would the whole key to this race was a good start what did he end up 13th i mean who beat him look at those just, names in front justin of him. cooper max volan styles robertson peace pierce brown levi kitchen that's right where you should be he should be in that mix with those guys yeah, right behind him was Josh Fariz, Nick Romano. Exactly. Okay. Okay. If that, but I, I look at him and after winning a supercross, I almost expect a little bit more. I think he's gonna be like the captain, but maybe not. Maybe he's right where he's supposed to be. Maybe I'm just being a little bit hard on him. And now you want to talk about my boy Swole. What well, dude, that sucked. That was such a bummer. That's just shit happens in the first lap. Yeah, I know. And that's just another thing. Like, I wanted to know what happened to the kid. What happened to him? What hurt? Like everyone's going to speculate, like, you know, he, oh, he hurt his shoulder. You don't know if he hurt his shoulder. He was holding his side. He could have broke his collarbone. Who knows? You no, know? Well, I mean, that was just RJ. RJ was like, listen, there's, you know, anytime you hold the arm like that, 
as somebody who's had a lot of shoulder and collarbone injuries, that's what it looked like to me. Do I know for sure? Fuck no, but we know like if all of us that have been hurt, the first thing we go to is how did we hold it when we got hurt? And if it's similar, that's our guess, you know? Yeah. Um, and then poor McAdoo, man, dude, his eyes, like he was in la la land. Oh man. I'm, I'm really was... worried about him. I hope he's okay. And for McAdoo, who's literally the toughest motherfucker that I've ever seen. Yeah. To needs to be sat down cart. and needs to be sat down sometimes not to come out and ride the cart. That's not good. So yeah, I was, I was a little worried about that one. He, he has, uh, you think he needs to be sat down after this injury, this head injury. Yeah. He's well, already, he's already well, missed a lot of time. You know, is his contract up? His contract's probably up. I don't think so. I think he's got another year. I'd have to, reach out and find out but i think he's got another year if, either way he's getting re-signed with that kind of heart and that, i mean he's a guy that can win supercross he could sit out the rest of this year and mitch would re-sign him or someone else would sign him he's he's fine um but no i mean now, now what's that what about the 33 forkner yeah well he's got a deal for next year and it actually takes him to a 450 he's got to renegotiate that and stay in the 250s he's not a 450 guy yet it's not going to go well, in my opinion. What do you think? I, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer. Like when you are a racer, if you're a, if you're a novice, and you race the novice class, you shouldn't move up to the intermediate class until you're dominating that class. And that's the same way I feel with a light spike. There's no reason to move up to the 450 if you're not consistently on the box. Because yeah. those guys that you're riding against in that class are all champions, more champions than the guys in the lights class. Oh, it's you know, ridiculous the, when you look at the four fifty big boy class. class. So, you know, speeds are a lot higher. There's way more risk. Injuries are, you know, but that's just me me saying that. Um, so take it what it's worth. I I don't know who's guiding his career, but shit pollen in my house it's just so out of control my eyes are just oh shit yeah gnarly yeah. gnarly yeah it's but gnarly. saying that i i you know that kid's had it tough i you know some he is i'm a big fortner uh, fan i like him so. so some his fault some not but whatever you know he he has it if he has that i look at it this way if he could go ride the ice bikes again he should do it and then just gamble on himself for a 450 ride because if he wins the title he can go race again well if i'm if i'm advising him i say go negotiate with him go with a 250 supercross win that title for sure and then outdoors it's not as important if you want to go 450 there go for it yeah like craig did yeah exactly exactly like craig did i think that's a great blueprint i mean honestly i mean what does an yeah, outdoor title get because for you? you're not jumping you're not diving into uh I mean, for him to just jump in the 450 class, you got double the races in Supercross, and then you just go right to outdoors right after it. And, there's, and you can't make it through a, a West Coast Supercross series in a year. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Hey, know, uh, we'll see. You mentioned Jason Lawrence. Did you see what uh, that he threatened to beat me up on Instagram? Oh, uh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> So I made a video. I, I did a little video on YouTube. I did the top eight riders that wasted talent, guys who had issues. Austin Stroop, number one on was Ron Lachine. Number two was Jason Lawrence. Not because I was bagging on him, because I was like talking about how good he was. I mean, he owned Dungey for the longest time. I mean, he was in his head. He could have done so much more. But I talked about, I said, you know, opiates. Opiates got a lot of riders in that 2000s era. He happened mm -hmm. to be one of them. So, but I know a lot of the guys were going over the asterisk, asterisk rig and saying, oh, this hurts and getting their painkillers. Um, you can confirm, deny, whatever. I know that for a fact. Uh, but that was just how, there was loose regulations. They just handed them out everywhere. You could get them. There was a pharmacy on every fucking corner at that time. It was a different time. And that's all I was saying, but that pissed him off and, so he threatened to beat me up. How many people on that list threatened to beat you up? So far, just J-Law. 
but the thing is, is okay. He's probably not in the best shape. He's what a buck thirty. Dude, I don't know how he's going to beat you up where he lives in Florida or New Jersey, wherever he's at. It's not like you're going to just want to go to the liquor store and bump into him. <laughs> Either way, I got a hundred pounds on him, Kenny. Good luck. Yeah. Like, maybe he could fight like my daughter. So, yeah, that'd be more of a fair fight. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh... No, I wouldn't. Dude, here's the thing. I don't want to beat up Jayla. That would be awful. Like, no, I'm going to leave that one alone. So, yeah, that's that's he's just rumbling his mouth. I mean, it's just so it just shows you like how immature people are. Like, going back to, oh, I'll, I'll kick your ass because you said this. Dude, come on. Well, and I'm pretty stupid and mature too. And I first responded with, where were we meeting? And then I just deleted it because I was like, that's stupid. I'm older than that. I cannot do that. So, yeah. yeah. That was, but, you, don't need to be, you don't need to be doing that shit either, dude. Fuck no, dude. I'm 40, I'm maybe 47 years old, bro. I don't need a fist fight. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but no. Yeah. So, um, getting back to the race, I think uh, it's going to be an exciting summer, man. It's going to be, uh, I think, once Map TV, uh cleans it up a little bit and uh you know i i really thought i was you know they hd now that every that like bitching and i think that the the you know just the whole their presentation of you know the way this it was produced i thought it was cool i thought it was you know decent dude and i loved rj and mcgrath in the booth and then next week we got brock glover that alone is almost worth a listen you know? Oh, dude, Brock Lower. They, uh, why can't only has to say welcome, right? <laughs> Just sit back and let these guys tell stories. And if and you want to, if you want to count how many times Brock talks about when he raced, count, dude. Just get a let's get a count a clicker when you think Brock he'll raced. do that. Oh, for sure. RJ didn't do that too much. Not RJ Brock. No, but I, I but I don't think so. Like I don't know. If that's oh, pretty dude. Good. I mean. I know Brock. I sit next to him on an airplane. You, you're just got to put some, you know, something in your ears, earplugs, and just just look at him and shake your head once in a while. <laughs> Dude, I totally disagree. I, I know Brock, too. He used to get supermoto tires for me. And I have watched the Vegas Supercross. Sit, I sat with him while the member of the mud race. I sat with him in the mud race, and we talked the whole time. So, yeah, yeah. he's a talker. He's good, but I mean, he knows so much about the old stuff, the current stuff. He's oh, he's dude. still with it. He'll be great in the booth, man. Did you ever see that picture I posted on my Instagram of Brock? He was he used the starting gate, the starting blocks before everybody. No. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I did see that. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's legendary stuff. So what what are the odds he brings up let Brock by? No, he won't. I know, absolutely will not. Hannah would though if he was there. Um, oh yeah. Anyway, all right, Kenny. Anything else about the race, or am I gonna let you go? No, no, we're good, dude. It was all good. It's like I said, dude. Next week's gonna be uh, an interesting weekend. Hopefully, uh, I can do some more of these and catch up and uh, call you out when you're wrong. What was I wrong about tonight? You got anything in particular that you didn't already yell at me for? No, you are. I was right. talking you about the started. broadcast, but I started because I was the broadcast so you were getting ready to go off on, and I thought no, they do. I wasn't going off on it. I was saying I was about to go off on it, and then I realized what happened. You so said I you was, were disappointed. I was disappointed. I'm still disappointed. I didn't see shit. I'm going to go back and watch that first moto and catch all the all the stuff I missed because of the commercials. And I do, I do. Okay, I love those segments they have with the old time where they had McGrath, and then they had uh, Han, or you know Johnson, and the like. It was about a two minute segment please please plug those in in between the motos and do not do it with like five minutes left yeah because i really want to pay attention to those and i couldn't because i was so mad because i was trying to figure out what was going on in the track yeah a lot of things could happen and you could have missed it man that would have been freaking I mean, nightmare dude nightmare yeah that could have been life threatening to you i want my six dollars back kenny i want my mtv <laughs> all right my man you have a good saturday night and uh i will catch you later brother all right. See ya. Later. Bye.